my presentation will be about the multi-channel consumer uh, and the tools to open the consumer black box. So, but before I talk about that, let me start with this one. You will see there on the slides search terms, uh, search queries over time from January 08, uh, 04 onwards. And there are two search queries. One is the blue line, one is the red line. And your task is now to tell me what the search query is. And to make it a bit easier for you, I show you what the first one is, the red one. And this one is ah. <laughs> oh. And actually, the queries are from Germany, but it applies to, to every market. You will find the same pattern, more or less. In the market. <laughs> and we are coming to other ones as well. So what's the second query? Soccer. Soccer. Exactly. <laughs> it's soccer. <laughs> this is what <laughs> it's all about. It's about soccer. So, Hop Schmitz. Hop yes. <laughs> okay, move on. What's that? Global queries. Again, it applies to every market at the moment. I think so. FIFA? FIFA sounds good. No, it's not. <laughs> Any idea? The iPhone? No, it's not the iPhone. I would never show an iPhone to girls. <laughs> Just kidding. I did it. BP? No. Oh yeah, BP would be quite No, I give you I give you a, a hint. And actually this is the highlight of the presentation. So. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. It's Uwe Seela. So my service to you today is to present you the Uwe Seela. Get used to it. The next four weeks will be you will be terrorized by the Uwe Seela. Yesterday I saw even a, a program in, in, in the German television about the Uwe Seela, and, and uh, they start to uh, to forbid to use the Uwe Seela uh, actually in, in in Germany in some cities uh, because it's uh, it's not really nice. Um, actually. Um, Yesterday we tested it in the, in the office uh, because the whole team, I mean, we are sitting very close to the retail team uh, and therefore uh, every, everybody was here and so uh, there was nobody in the office and then we, we tested it. But after two minutes somebody came out of the conference and said, hey, we're in a client meeting. Can you please start <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. What's the word Spieser in, in English? Uh, <laughs> we don't have Spieser in England. <laughs> Okay, good answer. So, but, but Alistair, my dear Alistair, the next one is for you. So we have search volume from UK and um, we have three curves in here um, and you can see there that there's obviously a very strong peak uh, for, the, for the green one uh, and it's in December last year and if you watch closely the blue one and the red one, you can see that there are rather tiny little peaks at the same time. It's one day. So I give you the, uh, the red one and the blue one. It's Algeria and Slovenia. So how does Algeria and Slovenia refer to England? Uh, Eurovision Song Contest. No. <laughs> the teams England is going to play in the World Tournament in the group playing. So what was on December 5th? USA. USA. No, it's not USA. There was a group drawing, exactly the Auslösung. So what's the what's the search term? It's not Auslösung or, or something like that. So I show you a picture and then you tell me what's the what's the query is. So what's the query? Yes, Miss Sarah. <laughs> oh, okay. English, right? So my dear, let's take the World Cup more serious. Yeah, if, the, if there's a group drawing, inform yourself about your opponents and not about the lovely Mrs. Saron. <laughs> you should take it really more serious. So, one more. The search term is up there. It's World Cup or European Championship. And now I ask you to make a guess what the two countries are that those search terms were entered. So you can see that there are peaks for the European tournament in 04 and 08 <coughs> and the World Cup in 06. But there are differences in the curves. You can see that uh, in 08, uh, there is a higher peak in the blue uh, market uh, versus the red one, while in 06, uh, the blue one is, is much smaller than the red one. Any idea what the markets are? 
countries, no? Spain, Spain is not, but you know, fairly close. I'll give you the first one again. Auschwitz. Yeah. What's the second one? Austria. Austria, exactly. Because they were not in the World Cup 06, therefore less search terms, <coughs> but more in the tournament where they were hosting it. Last one, global search terms. It's about, again, soccer, it's about tactics. So who are, where are the soccer fans? So we have, uh, again, the World Cup peak, we have, again, the, uh, the, the peak from the European tournament. But then we have another peak, which is a good hint again. It was end of April, end of April, Champions League. Mr. Mourinho was involved. What's the, shirt? What's the search term? It's an Italian one. Inter Milan. No. Ibros. Almost. What's the, what's the tactic from the Italians? Which is Catenaccio. Catenaccio. The famous Italian tactic to make sure that nobody scores in a game. Five people, five goalkeepers, and uh, no goalkeepers. <laughs> and anybody, can anybody explain me? You know, when I'm going to Italy once in a while, I always feel that the, com the country is like a bit chaotic, perhaps. Think so? So, okay. Yeah. <laughs> can anybody explain how to be the country who tends to be a bit chaotic place in most disciplines soccer and earth? It's unbelievable, isn't it? Very exciting. Catenaccio. We don't want to see that in South Africa. Not against Germany. So, from football now to retail, what are the right tactics to get in touch with the multi consumers? Pretty weak transition, right? It's like a tactics. <laughs> there are basically two things I, I, I would like to talk about, and this is uh, I, I'm separating media channels from sales channels. And let me start with the media channels. This is something you might have already seen. Um, it's a it was a research done by the EIB uh, together with Thinkbox. Thinkbox is, the, uh, is an organization which let's say promotes TV. Um, and uh, one of the main outputs was being online is the second most common thing you do while like, watching TV after eating. It's quite interesting. Um, I think during World Cup it would be third most common thing. Number two would be blowing <laughs> Um I think, I mean, this is also multi, multi channel, right? I mean, they, they're, they're watching TV and at the same time they're, they're, they're doing something online. And something similar you might have seen or might have heard from our sales team. Um, some anecdotes, and the most famous anecdote probably is that during the, the uh, Super Bowl in America, where the famous Super Bowl ads are coming up, and the search volume on, on YouTube and on Google massively increased during uh, the Super Bowl uh, because everybody researches for, for the brands and for the, for the spots. So you can see up there of 5,000%, uh, etc. Like that. And even for, for big brands like Kellogg's, search terms are going up very well. But this is all pretty, I would say, anecdotal. And so the question is, and, and this is what, what I want to talk about today, is are there more facts? And are there perhaps even tools that you can leverage to digest the multi-channel behavior in terms of marketing channel, in terms of media channel, for your consumers? So in Germany, we are currently in year two of running a pretty large program. And uh, it's a program that we are running with GFK. It's a pretty large uh, German uh, market research company. And what they did was they um, made it, uh, 67 case studies with CPG companies um, about the efficiency of media channels. And what you can see there is uh, the ROI of TV versus print versus display advertising versus video ads on YouTube versus search engine marketing. So the ROI here is based on short-term sales. Short-term means within the campaign or during the campaign and two weeks after. So therefore, don't, be, don't worry about the fact that the ROI is below one because it, it means that uh, the, the numbers here, like for, for SEM, mean that every euro you put into search engine marketing, you get <coughs> one, uh, one euro 40 back in, in revenues. So the fact that everything is below, or most of the channels are below one, shouldn't worry you simply because it's short-term sales and not any mid or long-term effect. But what you can see very well here is that the efficiency is, is very different across the channels. And when I'm presenting this, this, this chart, a lot of people say, and this is actually true, I mean, this 
it, it's not really an apple to apple comparison simply because the reach of each channel is pretty different. And I would say yes, that's true, but this is part of the, 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 the challenge or from our perspective the problem. Because if you look onto the same that's a really useful <laughs> I should have guessed, but um, the, um, when you look onto the media consumption of the people, and I'm just focusing here on TV, print, and, 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 and the internet, and compare it with the media exposure in terms of GRPs, cross rating points, uh, again, looking back onto the uh, 67 case studies of GFK, there's no balance. Okay? And so the question is um, how can you find the balance? Let's see what David Beckham thinks about it. More or less. I definitely want Brooklyn to be christened. Brooklyn is a sun, it's not a bridge anymore. So it's a sun, okay? <laughs> also, er will sich erstellen, wer will auf jeden Fall, dass Brooklyn getauft wird. But I don't know into what religion yet. <laughs> okay, so, so obviously, if, if you are in a decision making position, you should be aware of the alternatives. And probably he is not really aware that there are not too many alternatives to get Christen. Um, and um, so in order to support your decision, um, we supported the GFK to build a tool, which is called the Media Efficiency Panel. The tool is now up and running in three markets. It's Germany, where we started in, in, in summer 08. And then we launched in the UK in uh, late, uh, I think it was December last year. And last week, Netherlands went live. Um, and what we are measuring there, um, um, GFK and, and, and actually Kanta are measuring the, the, one of the top uh, vendors on earth uh, in terms of market research. Um, they are measuring demographics, so that you can select your target audience. Uh, they measure media consumption online, TV, print, as well as sales. Um, on an ongoing basis, every supermarket purchase, CPG purchase, is measured, but also retail purchases. So on a quarterly basis, the households here, and we are talking about 10,000 plus households here, so 20,000 plus consumers, are reporting on a quarterly basis their financial products they purchase, uh, their, their, their tech products, any consumer electronic products, or something else they, they bought retail. So fashion, for instance, and I will talk about that later when I'm presenting here some numbers from a study we did. So, um, the funny thing is that last week we found out that Wikipedia reports that this tool doesn't exist more or less. Because this, if you're doing something like that, if you're, if you're a subset of, of people, a so-called panel, which are reporting on an ongoing basis different kind of data, you call it single source data because every data is coming from the same source, single source data. And there's an entry in Wikipedia, and, the, and Wikipedia says it doesn't work. Several people have, have tried, several companies have tried, especially in the US, but everybody has failed. So therefore, we will help uh, Wikipedia to come up with the right article, because actually, we found out that it's working, and the reason why it's working is pretty simple from my perspective, because at the moment, we are at a tipping point for market research. You know, for all of you, the new technology is really a challenge. The internet and, and the ongoing development of the internet is pretty much a challenge. For me, as a market research person, it's a nice tool because, because I can do uh, market research with the new tools. So this one here, this one here is something I use to measure TV consumption. Okay. And this is how it works. It's all about technology, as well as my presentation. So if somebody, so if, if there's a TV program running, two things are happening at market research in our, in our cooperation with GFK. So the sound, let me use my old fashioned pointer. <laughs> so the sound is captured by a company called Thomson Media Control. And they are um, recording every TV program in Germany and in the future also in the UK and in the Netherlands. And out of the TV programs that they are recording, they do an acoustic fingerprint. At the same time, we are measuring with this device in the consumer households every sound which is in the air next to the TV. Okay? So if somebody watches a TV show, we are recording it 
Does the device? Does the consumer know that? Sure. They all <laughs> 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 yeah. The funny thing is that uh, the, the incentive for the panelists in the, in the, in the tool for the GFK is a street view card. No, just kidding. <laughs> we are just kidding. No, they, they, they know. They, they get an incentive for it. They have the device, and it's done by GFK, not by ourselves. We are just supporting it. I don't want to read that one in, in the newspaper. Well. So, they use the tool. They can use the touch screen to say, okay, I'm, I'm watching TV now. So, uh, the, the, the names of each household panelist appear on the, on the touch screen. And then, an acoustic fingerprint is made as well here on the device so that you know, if somebody captures the sound, nobody can understand it because it's encrypted. Okay? And then it goes to a database saying here, and it's matched. So this file is matched to all the reference files, and then you can understand, okay, this guy has seen TV show XYZ. So technology helps very much for us to do market research, and therefore, I think Wikipedia was right for the past that single source panels can't work. Now, as we have a tipping point in market research, now we can do it pretty effectively. And the future might look like this. So from my perspective, market research will be like a zebra party. So for zebras, it's not a party until someone brings in the barcode scanner. <laughs> Very because in the end, I mean, you all know that this one here contains a barcode scanner. So why not using it to capture TV, to capture uh, GPS, to understand if somebody was exposed to outdoor, if somebody walks into a store, as well as to scan the, the barcode of a product to understand which products are Probably this was the idea. So this is an example. So we started the new TV measurement in Germany as a pilot market in, on uh, April 1st, and the first full set of data we received back was now from May this year. And actually, the first slide I received arrived yesterday night, which was great, and because I pushed the measure to get something for today. And they analyzed the campaign by Seat Automotive Company, but you can use it as well. It's an open tool, um, so you can use it as well um, if you want. And what you can see here is the cumulative net reach of the Seat campaign. And the Seat campaign was focusing on TV and on YouTube only, and there was only one YouTube booking on one single day. So what happened, and you can now look very detailed onto the, uh, how the net reach was, uh, was going up over the course of the campaign during May. And what you can see in the first phase, which is very typical for TV, you're reaching a lot of consumers very quickly. Then the curve flattens a bit. And then what happened on May 24th was that due to the different media consumption of some consumers in the market, they had made a homepage, so-called homepage table on YouTube. So they booked for the whole day a video ad. And then you can see here that there was again an uplift in reach because you can you can um, uh, you can expose your your your, your advertising uh, to new consumers who are not watching TV that much anymore. So therefore, by booking YouTube here one slot, and the same will apply to, to other platforms in the internet, um, you can add incremental reach to your campaign. And the great thing is not that it happens, the great thing is that you can now analyze it and better understand which are the right platforms for you uh, to make your curve, your, your, your reach curve more efficient. So in the end, if you can combine everything, and we're just focusing here, and this is why it's a great example for today, because it's, it's pretty simple. Uh, there's just TV and YouTube. Um, you can you can look onto how much reach have you generated on TV, 45% uh, for Zia. Uh, budget was like three million. Uh, the YouTube budget was 80k, um, and YouTube reached three percent. So obviously there's an overlap, but also there's something incremental. incremental reach by YouTube. So 46, almost 50% of the contacts to the target audience on YouTube are new contacts. So 24 days of the campaign were already over by the end, and they still uh, find new consumers because they go to a new media. Okay? Cross media, multi channel. Okay? Now going to sales channels. Um, if we 
talk to advertisers, uh, to, to, to all of you, uh, the, the, the most uh, common question is, um, we would like to understand uh, the relation between researching online and purchasing offline. And I think you, you heard quite often from, from my dear sales colleagues, the expression of research online, purchase offline, Ropo, or online to store O2S. So people research online first and then go to the shop and buy there. And the question is, what's the statistical evidence? And I would like to present you four, five levels actually, of statistical evidence for researching online and purchasing offline. Level number one is something that you might already have in your company, and this is just reaching out to consumers and ask them. So from a research perspective, self-reported data. Last week, there was a conference by the IAB in Barcelona, and there was a tool launched, uh, which was supported by ourselves and by TNS, uh, the second largest research company in Europe. And this tool is called Consumer Commerce Parameter. So we reached out in a lot of markets to uh, 2,000 people each and asked them about their behavior. You can see the URL up there. Uh, you can now, if you're online, go on the site and, and, and play around with it. It's a tool that is uh, free, uh, accessible for everybody. So what you can select is, for instance, um, 25 EMEA markets. So Swiss is in Switzerland, is in there, Austria is in there, and Egypt, and Denmark, and whatever. So it's not following World Cup logic, to be honest. So we were not sure, you know, there's no Honduras or Chile in there, so, but perhaps a later stage. 12 more markets from Asia will come. Uh, this is the next step, and currently we're looking into North America and Latin America as well. You can select 36 products. I cross my fingers that your products are in there. If not, let us know, probably next time then. And also you can go into uh, target groups, uh, not very detailed, but you can at least select age, gender, and uh, some clusters for internet usage and sense that low or medium or high internet usage in general, because you would assume that uh, heavy internet users tend more to purchase online, and therefore it might make sense for you to split it up so some results, just an example here. I don't want to go detailed into the, into the tool. Um, UK toys here. And um, what I'm showing here, the data, uh, and again, you can go online and, and, and dig, uh, dig out something for your market and for your products. Um, buying online, so bought toys online, and then research online, purchase offline. So 21% of all toys, all people who bought toys in the UK market in the last 12 months, uh, bought online, and another 12% researched online before and then purchased offline. Don't try the same example. Not that you're coming up with different results and ask mean questions. Okay. Uh, example for Switzerland, CDs, DVDs. Perhaps we can leave the category out due to the iPad. What the future will bring? 34% versus 40% try out. I mean, the, 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 the purpose of my presentation is pretty much to present you tools to get into the mind of the consumers. So this is one of the tools. Uh, try it out, have fun, and again, I cross my fingers at here, right. The products are in there. So you will end up with something like you're seeing there, um, that you understand, okay, so, so many people have researched online and purchased offline, and then the next step is to better understand how they actually research online. And this is a, a question that, that I often hear from, from uh, our clients. And so what clients would like to see is to get more observational data. And I brought an example. We did a study, which we call a fashion study. Actually, I know very well that apparel and fashion is not the same. Here are some examples. Um, actually, the, the study was about apparel, uh, but we call it fashion because the client felt more that they are not doing apparel, they did food fashion, but it was a long discussion, but anyway. So what you can see here, very exciting, is on the left-hand side, it's uh, the German coach, Jogi Löw, uh, in the mid-80s, I think it was. He played for Stuttgart, and uh, yeah, very nice picture, I would say. On the top, even better, Mr. Johann Kreuf, one of the best players ever. Um, nice combination of green socks, uh, something red, something whatever, I don't know. Very nice couple, I would say. I think it will come back again. Hopefully I'm, I'm dead then. But. <laughs> Below that, um, probably you recognize him, Jean-Marie Pfaff, the famous goalkeeper from Belgium. 
uh, burying a dozen of <laughs> dead animals. <laughs> and on the right hand side, Jorge Campos, a uh, 1986 goalkeeper from Mexico. He's very famous as well. Uh, also, very exciting shirt he's wearing. Uh, I think there's a long, long list on Google image search about, <laughs> especially about him. Um, so, as you can see here, first of all, I mean, apparel is not, it does not equal fashion, and sometimes what's fashion uh, in the earlier days does not necessarily be fashion nowadays, and I think they're pretty good examples. But what we did was, in terms of methodology, we went into the panel that I presented beforehand, in the media efficiency panel, we did it in Germany, and, but we will do similar case studies, I think, in Netherlands and UK soon. We walked into the panel and looked onto people who, who bought apparel or fashion and look onto their online usage to better understand what they're actually doing online. And here are some of the results. So the whole slide that I, that I will present in, in, in over the next couple of minutes will focus on people who purchased fashion during what was September and November and who have internet access. So this is our, our sample base, if you want. And they represent 46% of the German population, so actually 27.7 uh, million people. So first one, but not very exciting, because this is something you can derive out of the tool you have seen before, and as well, how many people have purchased the different channels. 97% bought on offline, 80% online, 5% uh, mail order. Uh, so, but this is not really new information, because the, the, the new information might be what the overlap is. That's number one, you can see it right here. So the overlap uh, between the channels is 15% from the, from the online perspective. So there are 14% who buy offline and online. Another 1% is buying even on all three channels, including as well mail order. <coughs> Probably you have, you have same data already, but then this, this is the first aspect. So where are people buying? What's the overlap there between online and offline channel? And the next step, obviously, is again to go into the research process. You see the data here. Now, now not based on, um, on questionnaire data, but on actual behavior. And what's quite interesting to see here is that 63% of the offline buyers researched online before. And not safe stated, but based on actual measurement in the households of the people. And if you combine both information, so where did they purchase on or offline, and where did they research on and offline, you can then come up with this map here and fill the cells, and then you will learn that 48% research online, the green one, and purchase offline. Right. Okay. And the great thing about the tool is now that you can digest very deeply how they behave. So one example here, and I don't want to go into, into too many details here because um, it, it might not apply to everybody in this category, but you can actually do it on your own in the, in the web efficiency panel, or media efficiency panel, sorry. You can look onto how many unique websites were visited in the research process or how many search queries were entered. What you have to do, and this is what we did with the client up front, was to define which websites are relevant to the category. Okay, and you can cluster them, what we did as well. And you also need to define what the keywords are, the relevant keywords. So what's a fashion keyword, what's not a fashion keyword, because we are measuring everything. We are measuring the flight to Mallorca as well as the, the, the apparel keyword, you know, Libas jeans. Like so you need to define what you want to measure. And then you can come up with, with uh, very detailed, very granular data here. So the main learning, if you, if you look onto the slide, is basically that the research process of people who buy offline and online is not very different. You know, I mean, there are differences, actually, but they are not that big, um, as you might um, expect. Probably it does not apply to you, because you might have a high online affinity, but there are a lot of advertisers out there who have no insights into the online consumer. And actually, the online consumer is not really online consumer only. It's also an offline consumer. So, only one uh, website difference, if you want, uh, one unique website difference between offline, but not very much from our perspective. So, probably you would you would say now, well, interesting insights, but how much money do I now make? What's the what's the what's the money that the people are generating for myself? that I reach online and then drive into my stores because you want to understand what the revenue is. 
And therefore, I'm coming to level three of statistical evidence for online to store or research online versus offline, and this is attribution. So you are attributing your sales you're currently having to a channel. And one very simple example is call tracking. So we did a case study, which was in, in this case it's a financial company, an insurance company in Germany. So consumer went onto, uh, onto Google, entered a relevant keyword, the AdWord appeared for the client, the, um, panel, the, it wasn't the, panel, sorry, the consumer clicked on the AdWord, came onto the landing page, and on the landing page there was a specific hotline number which was only shown if the referral was AdWords. So in that case, we can say that every call onto that hotline number could be attributed to AdWords because it was just shown when somebody clicked onto the landing page by AdWords. And then we were just capturing what happened in the call center on that specific hotline number. So how many calls, how many contracts, how many contract proposals were sent. So the main chart out of that analysis was this one here. So on each 100 contracts they are making online, an additional 18 were made offline via the call center. So the robo or online to store effect here is 18%. So on each 100 contracts online, additional 18 contracts offline, measured by different attribution via the hotline number. And so if you then go back to your, to, to your, uh, uh, to your exercise to assess your marketing channels, you can say, oh, well, you know, at the moment I might judge my marketing channel on, on the 100% online conversions, but perhaps I should consider to, to assess it based on the 180% that I actually um, bring in. Some more examples here um, from travel in Germany, finance in Netherlands, finance, the, uh, it's the one that I've shown on the slide before, and the 18% from the, from the case in Germany, telecommunication twice in Germany, and also finance again in Netherlands. So what a range, right? Pretty broad range. Um, so we are more than happy to do more case studies here uh, to better understand what the dynamics are. So I mean, obviously, um, website quality plays a role. I mean, if the robo effect is high, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's a good thing because you know, calling the, the call center costs money, which the online conversion does not. And it might be due to low website quality, bad registration process, stuff like that. Also, it will, it will be different across the products. Um, so you can see here very different uh, results for finance. Uh, and it was more or less the same product, but huge difference. And also, I think there will be market differences. Um, from what I understood so far, the UK market tends to uh, be more keen to, to uh, picking up the phone and, and ordering something on the, on the phone, while Germans uh, not necessarily tend to do that. So there will be differences, I think. And we would be keen to support more case studies here to better understand uh, and map out markets, products, and the Attribution. Number four, level four would be modeling. So a bit more sophisticated. To be honest, too sophisticated for me. Therefore, French example here. What you are doing when you are doing modeling, and probably you are doing it already in your in your companies, that you are taking data over time, so time series of two years time, three years time, monthly data, and then you compare the data. So you are taking, for instance, everything where you would say this influences my 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 sales. So it could be media spent for TV, media spent for print, media spent online, perhaps seasonality, perhaps oil price. I don't know whatever. Whatever drives your business. And then you're correlating it to the sales over time and see if there are certain patterns similar. So if you know my, my if, if I increase my spend in, uh, in on TV, does sales correlate to it? So is there an uplift then in sales as well during my, my TV campaign? You're not doing it anecdotally, obviously you're using a model, so called regression model. Um, and uh, but this is exactly more or less what it's all about. It's, it's, it's a comparison of, of patterns over time. And what Auchan, uh, the largest, uh, one of the largest retailers in France learned from a study they did was that 30% of TVs uh, set sales um, offline um, were, uh, could be attributed to the website, actually. This was the output of the model, uh, quite interesting. And what the next step then would be, and this is what they did with us, was to look onto what are the referrals for the website, for instance, AdWords, or could be a display, could be whatever. And then they found out that 
on each euro they spend on AdWords, they got 20 euros in return from the t uh, TV sets they sold offline. So modeling is a way a lot of advertisers believe in. I also understand that there are a lot of advertisers who don't believe in there. Um, we are happy to support cases here if you want. So let me That's quite interesting example. And the next level would be an experiment. Experiment is the best way uh, to understand what the incremental sales effect of your online campaign is. Um, we have a guy in the, in the company who's called Hal Varian, he's our chief economist. He's a professor at Berkeley. Yeah. Berkeley. So high profile person. Uh, search for him on Amazon, it's quite impressive. Uh, but don't do that before you run into a meeting with him, because then you feel really, really small. Uh, this happened to me when I first met him. And he says, you know, the, the, the best way of doing it to understand what's the incremental effect of, of, of your campaign is, is to run an experiment. It's, but it's pretty tough, because, I mean, life is not a laboratory. Um, so what we did, for instance, uh, in Germany was uh, that we did a case study. Uh, I, will, I will present some of the results in, in, in a minute was that we did a geotest. Um, so we looked, or the, the, the client actually looked into where are my, 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 my shops, uh, how can I cluster them, so that I can, can compare test regions where I increase my budget versus control re regions where I keep my budget or even lower my budget to understand what the impact is. And uh, I think uh, you might use this scenario already to understand uh, the, or to, to assess uh, other marketing channels but this is something you can you can use quite well for online marketing as well because as you know uh, you can uh, you can uh, do regional targeting on the web uh, for more or less uh, every advertising product uh, and this is what the company did as well it's a company called Hagebau it's a home improvement store and we used two products uh, lawnmower uh, rasenmäher and bicycle and what we as both products are pretty seasonal um, because they are just purchased during summer um, basically um, what we did was to compare um, 2008, summer period, versus uh, the campaign period in 2009, same period, and looked onto how the revenue developed. Uh, and you can see that in the control markets, where they uh, decreased their budget, um, they don't want to spend additional money, so they increased in the control markets, and in the decrease in control markets had increased in the test markets, um, that the revenue went down in the control markets by, what is it, a lot more, 4%, 5%? It's too small. Are you reading it? But and in the test markets went up by six percent, so there's a eleven percent delta. So this is the incremental value of your online campaign. And similar finding for bicycles. Um, actually, bicycle sales went down overall <coughs> year for the company on bicycles that year. And the impact on the ROI then is really massive. I mean, we're talking about products that you would not necessarily buy online, right? Um, uh, so I think lawnmower um, is something you want to more or less try out uh, in, in the store. Uh, so therefore, the ROI impact is really massive. So we index the ROI that they are currently calculating for, for online conversions and, and put it on, on, on 100%, and then added the, the offline component. So all of a sudden, you have a ROI which is seven times higher. It's so high that uh, it's, it's a bit embarrassing to, to present it. Uh, on the bicycles, it's, it's doubling. Uh, but it's due to the effect that, I mean, the, the base sales, sales are, are pretty low on that product somewhere. <coughs> so, that's basically it, what I wanted to show you today. Strike is balance. I mean, this is what it's all about, right? It's not about on or offline. I mean, you would do both, obviously, but you need to find some balance very well. And I try to present you some tools that you can use for yourself to digest your consumer because your consumer is on and offline. There might some people be still who are just offline, but this is now the minority. So if you're interested in improving your, uh, your media channels, test the GFK Media Efficiency Panel. Uh, it's up and running in Germany, will be live. It is live. Uh, certain components are live in the UK and Netherlands, uh, and the TV measurement might start next year as well. Uh, so there's a lot of data you can derive, which is very unique at the moment in those markets, and as I explained via as an example of uh, Wikipedia, it's really unique worldwide. Um, number two, um, don't think in silos anymore um, and uh, test those tools. Um, also, I, I try to present some of the tools you can use uh, to digest the online to store effect. I think you are all also very excited about the 
the effect of researching offline and purchasing off online. I think this is a, the necessary next step that we, that we should take. A bit harder for us to digest as a market research person because then we are talking about data that you guys have that we can't really come up with because you know where you're sending catalogs to and stuff like that or direct mail. So probably we need to work together there. But most important one is the last one. Listen carefully to Nick who will come up now. But one last one for myself finally because I started with soccer, so far, let me end with soccer, so far. and if you're German, and if you're talking about football legions, and you're talking about <laughs> Andreas Bremer, German Lieb, he is the guy who made the penalty in 1990 uh, final, um, the one goal, um, and he's a very, very smart person, everybody from Germany can really agree, he's a role model for every male person in Germany, and he's famous for his bombos. Uh, and once after a press conference and so uh, final stage he said and it's I tried to translate it in German and it might be better so I'm not sure if it's really funny but he once said I only want to say one word and this is thank you very much <laughs>